All right. Hey, there we go. Look at that. People come flooding in. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our August Masterclass. My name is Jeremiah Taylor. I'm part of the team here at Ojo Labs, and we have got an exciting masterclass for you today. Uh, spoiler alert, it's more social media content. We heard your feedback. You all loved last month's social media content. Uh, so we're going to have even more this month. Holy cow, there's already almost 200 people in here. Hey, for those of you just joining, my name is Jeremiah Taylor. Welcome to our August Masterclass. Um, as you join, go to the bottom of your screen, open up the button that says chat, uh, and go in there and tell us where in the country you're joining us from. Uh, I always like to know that the chat actually works because sometimes you guys can't send chats. Oh, this is amazing. Tennessee, Minnesota, Houston, San Diego, LA. Uh, awesome. Look at that. Look at all our West Coast folks. It's 10 a.m. They already got like the, the break must have been low today. People are not on their surfboard. They're on this meeting. Or Jeff, they're excited about your content. One of the two. <laughs> uh, Vegas, Baton Rouge. Awesome. Hey, welcome everybody. For those of you that just joined, my name is Jeremiah Taylor. I'm part of the team here at Ojo and welcome to your August masterclass. It is 10.04. We're north of 200 in here. Uh, so I think we should get started. Um, just some quick housekeeping throughout the presentation. You're going to get an amazing keynote today, uh, all about marketing and the use of social media. Uh, I'm excited. I'm going to take notes. So if you are not ready. Like go get a notepad, get ready. You got 30 seconds. This is being recorded. So if for some reason you can't stay all the way to the end or you find something's really valuable. You want to share it. We do send out these recordings afterwards. And finally, at the very end, we have a couple of cool product updates that I'm share with you. Um, so stay tuned to the very end. It'll be like the last two minutes. I'm Mr. Heller, I'm going to turn it over to you to introduce our guest today. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Jeremiah. Um, as you know, we do these for one reason, to provide value back to our network. Um, we appreciate the partnership that we have with everyone, and, and we want to deliver as much value as possible. So that's why we do these great master classes. Um, today's is going to be fantastic. Uh, we're going to be turning it over to Jeff Pitzer in a moment. Jeff is a regional VP for USA Mortgage. He's the Lab Code Agents uh, podcast host. He's co-founder of Drunk on Social uh, and also of Real Estate Mastery Pros and uh, Business Video School. So has more things in his title than um, most real estate agents, which is rare. The uh, Jeff has become a video and social expert through his execution results. He, as I mentioned, with the VP of USA Mortgage, where his primary role is business development through coaching, teaching, and hosting uh, different events. Uh, this has also led to him becoming the co-founder of several platforms, including, like I said, Drunk on Social, uh, the Business Video School, Real Estate Mastery Pros. Uh, you guys are familiar with Lab Code Agents probably, and he's the host of the Lab Code Agents podcast and co-host of the Social Genius podcast with uh, Tristan, uh, who we had last month. So um, I could go on and on, but I don't want to take any more time. I want to turn it over to Jeff so he can... Uh, share with you some of the things that we know will be helpful and useful. So Jeff, thanks for being here. Awesome. Thank you guys for having me. Am I good to uh, start sharing screen and rocking and rolling? All right, let's go. So I heard you guys talk to uh, Tristan last month. So I have a pretty good idea of what you probably uh, talked about. And actually I did watch some of it. So I know what, what he touches on because he and I talk regularly, obviously. In fact, we're recording a podcast this afternoon. Can I get a thumbs up that you can see my screen here? Good. All right. Let me, uh, let's go to the presentation mode. All right. So we're going to jump in. I just, uh, as I just told the team, I'm, I'm basically condensing a roughly 60 to 90 minute presentation to try to bring this to you in about 40 to 45 minutes. So buckle up. Uh, we're going to go down down some rabbit holes of of psychology on social, on how you should be using social and how how you should be using AI and all those kind of things. But uh, really, we're going to start uh, from kind of looking looking ahead. And uh, so our presentation slides a little dramatic, but uh, it's dramatic for good reason. 
And so Tristan and I, we speak on, on several circuits, Tristan more even than I do, but one of them is with the National Association of Real Estate Brokers. And uh, beginning of 2022, they had asked us to uh, speak specifically about emerging trends with tech as it relates to real estate. And so uh, we built a list and this was uh, into 21. So going into 22, uh, we, our, I, I should say, went to Google and just did a ton of research. Obviously, we we kind of put our own our own thoughts into it. But we wanted to see what was out there, and so I just aggregated uh, probably 10, 10 to twenty different uh, sources and uh, put everything together based upon you know our vision from what we're seeing uh, versus what uh, the pundits are saying and seeing, and and so. This then continued into 2023. And the reason why I, br I bring that and bring this up is because what I saw in 2022, this list right here is somewhat similar. There's a couple of different things on the list uh, from 22 to 23. But as I was standing on stages in 22, talking about which, by the way, artificial intelligence was at the top of that list. I had no idea really what I was talking about as it related to AI. And now here we are. We all know where we are, right? If you're not using AI, you're already behind. And I'm not going to beat that down on you. But the bigger point here is that we literally won a, a year ago in 2022 – I'm talking about artificial intelligence, kind of guessing and assuming what that's going to mean. Fast forward to November, December of this past year, and all of a sudden, ChatGPT comes on the stage, and now it's countless AI platforms. The bigger point is that's how fast things are changing and evolving. And I'm going to bring it back to social media here in a little bit. But I want to start there because if you have the mindset, and, and I know our industry very, very well, of waiting and seeing. I'm going to just wait and see. There's this new app called TikTok and it's a bunch of teenage girls dancing. This is stupid. I'm going to wait and see. I'm going to wait and see what happens. If you continue to carry that mindset forward with technology and where this world is going, you're liable to go extinct. And that's what we use, evolve your brand or go extinct. That's kind of one of our, one of our taglines or headlines. And we mean it because uh, the way humans want to interact, the way uh, the world is evolving, and it's happening so fast, it's it's those of us, it's those of us salespeople and professionals that embrace it quicker, that are looking ahead and paying attention to things that are going to be the ones that reap the biggest reward, that see the biggest opportunities. And we're going to talk about that with social as it is today. So, so here is the 2023 list, obviously AI. Uh, Ironically, in 22, I was actually highlighting VR and AR because I thought that might be next. I'm talking about virtual reality. I'm talking about augmented reality. And when I talk about virtual reality, you think of the Oculus. You think about gaming. But I think what's going to become very mainstream in the coming years is that consumers – are going to expect and want to watch a home walkthrough, a listing video in their VR headset. They're not going to want to watch an antiquated video or they're not going to want to actually go to the property. Really more importantly, they're not going to want to go and meet you in person until they have a chance to do a virtual walkthrough and feel like they're in the home. And these are the things that we have to start wrapping our head around. Blockchain is already well on its way. If you're not familiar, I've never talked about that. Uh, there's a platform that's building out the blockchain for real estate. It's only going to make life easier. It's going to make transactions move quicker. It's going to make fundings even e way faster than they than they are today. So it's a good change, but it's coming. Uh, drones, I don't think I need to explain a whole lot about that. Smart homes and lot, which is the internet of things. Uh, the, the best way I can articulate this is just simply describing consumers as we move forward can sit on their couch and not need you uh, as a real estate agent. They can sit on their couch and ask, hey, Alexa, show me homes for sale in this zip code, right? And they, it's going to be able to just flash it up on their screen because this is where the world is going. It's really already here, but it's only going to continue to improve. Uh, BIM is building information modeling, which in my opinion might put architects out of business. And then of course there's the metaverse and we really don't know where that's going yet, but it kind of encompasses a lot of these things. To take it one step further, uh, a lot of you may or may not know this, but the industrial revolution took roughly 250 years to reach underdeveloped parts of the world. The internet took about 30, 
the cloud and mobile devices, cell phones took about 15 years and now AI is taking months to reach the same areas. And we've seen a uh, similar growth, even with social media, for those of you that are familiar with, with threads that just came out as a, you know, kind of a competitor to Twitter or X, uh, the, the growth that they, that they realized in a very, very short, uh, like literally a week was unheard of. Uh, and that's how quick things are happening. The Fed coin, uh, for those of you that are not paying attention to the whole digital currency landscape, uh, and, and as I mentioned, blockchain, as you think of blockchain, most of you think of Bitcoin, you think of Ethereum, you think of Dogecoin, you think of all the money you, you may have lost like me. But the our government and the governments around the world are all establishing their a digital currency. And a lot of what I've read is says that you can expect that that will at some point in time replace the dollar as we know it. And these are all things that are going to have relevance as it relates to real estate because uh, consumers are going to want to start buying homes with digital currency. It's already started. Uh, there, you know, I've, as as some of you may have already experienced, there's been some millionaires created through digital currency, and they wanted to buy homes with it, and you had to be certified to do so. It's just something else you should be paying attention to, and this is what I visualize. Uh, for AR, augmented reality, I do believe there will become a time in the, in the near future where you're going to have a consumer that calls you and says, you know, hey, Jenna, I want to see or I want to talk to you about listing my house and I'm interviewing a few real estate agents. And I think you're going to typically, as, as we all do, we're going to say, great, cool, let's schedule an appointment. And the consumer on the other line is going to say, no, no, I don't want you to come to my house. I want to beam you in through my AR device that sits on my living room table. And I think for some of you, you're thinking to yourself, dude, you're high. What are you talking about? But if I had asked you 10 years ago, uh, do you envision a time where we're going to be able to pick up our phone, push a button and have a video call uh, with a family member across the world? You would have said I was high then too. And this is the kind of stuff that is evolving and happening so fast. And if you're not paying attention to it, if you're not prepared for it, essentially you're going to get left behind. And so it's very, very important to continue to uh, embrace and, and pay attention. Now, I'm going to step it back for a second because it's it's really funny how as as I've been talking and, and speaking on these these topics for the last several years, one of the topics that I was talking about as, I, as it related to social media was the demonization of social media. And it's funny because just in a short amount of time, I almost feel like social media has become like the Gen X of social media platforms. Like it was the Gen Z. Now all of a sudden it's the Gen X. It's like, it's like the old guy in the room uh, because that's how fast things have come in. But as I talk about the demonization of social media, I talk about how, just how, how we feel about it. So many of you probably look at social media as a nuisance, uh, something that you may, you may look at it and say, it's, it's ruined our society. It's, it's, it's ruined young females. I can speak to this. I have I have young daughters. I have daughters in their in their twenties that that have gone through this, so I know exactly what they're talking about. Uh, but you have uh, you have two options to look at social media. You can look at it from the cup half full or a cup half empty perspective, right? And you can look at it as this is this has really changed the landscape of our world, or you can look at it and say, "Wow, there's so much opportunity here." Uh, and I'm going to expand on that here in a second. But I want to remind you, as we're talking about that, that if I rewound the clock at one point in time, mothers across America were demonizing this box saying, damn it, just just before this radio came around, uh, my kids used to want to play in the yard. Now all they want to do is come inside and listen to the radio. Then there was the time when this came around and our mothers used to tell us what? That we would go blind if we watched too much television or if we sat too close to the TV. Our brains would turn to mush. It turns out our mothers were lying to us. Then there was the cell phone, the, the car phone. You remember this? I remember thinking to myself, why on earth do we need a car phone? Why can't we just wait till we get to our location? Now, in today's world, if I walk out of my house without my cell phone, I would rather walk out of my house without any clothes on than leaving my cell phone behind because that's how, how much we have evolved and changed. And then there, of course, there was this. There was a time that if you carried one of these around, you were you were considered a drug dealer. Uh, and then they became very mainstream and then also quickly just phased right out. I was in college when I had a beeper and then try to get this sound out of your head. Uh, there was that time when the Internet came around and we were thinking to ourselves, this is this is cute. But what are we really going to use this for? A bunch of chat rooms. Right. And now I honestly don't know how we can survive without the Internet. You think back to, you know, uh, the Dewey Decimal System or having to go to a library to research things. And now it's at our fingertips 24-7 every single day. It's crazy. 
Now, I believe that Tristan probably, I don't know if he shared this or at least discussed it, but he and I are always kind of paying attention to, to this particular list, which is Wikipedia. And this is the most recent list uh, where the top five is Google, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, this is an updated one. Instagram jumped over, well, X, obviously the list hasn't updated yet, but uh, it, the top four out of five are social media apps. And so notice it's the top most visited websites. I didn't say social media apps. Social media apps are where people are spending all of their time. And then if I you know, look, look a little further down the list, TikTok's at 15, LinkedIn is at 19, Reddit 21, OpenAI, which, is, which owns ChatGPT is actually at number 20. Uh, this stuff is very, very relevant. Uh, social media is being used by 4.6 billion people. And on average, at the end of last year, we are spending on average two and a half hours a day uh, on the internet, and more specifically on social media. It's where everyone is. And uh, 68%, almost 70% of US adults are on social media. There are a few places which are, are, are as effective as reaching customers. I would argue there is no place. Uh, there's definitely no place. Uh, because when I think back 10 years ago about how I marketed my business, you know, it was it was newspaper ads, it was radio, it was television, it was uh, you know, maybe maybe doing mailers, uh, maybe a bus stop bench, maybe a grocery store cart, a billboard, all of those things. And every single one of those mediums had a limited reach for a large sum of money. And now here we are in this new world with social media completely taking over. And now we have this opportunity to organically touch an exponential amount of people, our audience, a targeted audience, a niche audience. And so many of us are not using it correctly. And we're leaving that opportunity just kind of sitting sitting on the sidelines. And I like to remind my audiences, you know, why people are on social media. And I know when I told Jenna uh, one of the one of the topics for uh, today's webinar was, you know, how you agents aren't using social media correctly, because at some point over the history of social media, we decided as an industry, that it was a good idea to post a picture with our clients at closing as if that's a good post. But when you really think about that, that, and, and the kind of the psychology behind it, why does no other industry do that? Like when a doctor saves somebody's life through surgery, that's social media worthy, right? When maybe when my mechanic uh, fixes my car because I can't get to work. That might be social media worthy. There's so many things that are actually social media worthy, but we decided that we were going to take this, this medium called social media and start spamming our friends and family. And that's exactly what we do. And so stop for a second and think to yourselves, why in the hell was social media invented? That hasn't changed. See, I'm not going to go back to MySpace. We're going to just start at Facebook. But why was it invented? To connect with other college students, right? Why was Instagram created? Because people were getting sick of the drama on Facebook. And frankly, our, our children were, were tired of the fact that us, that us quote unquote, boomers, that's what my kids call me, us boomers took over Facebook. And that has continued to evolve on every single platform. We're now doing it on TikTok to them. And they've all moved. They're moving away from that. People use social media to keep in touch. They, they, they use it to kill time. They use it to read news stories, to, to stay up. The, it is, is taking over uh, for, for our, our source of where we get our news from, more specifically on TikTok. We use it to do research. Uh, and, and we, you know, as you can see here, we, it's primarily entertainment. And here is the average time spent on social media this year. This is where consumers are spending the majority of their time. Uh, TikTok leads the way. It's crazy to think that this app didn't even exist a handful of years ago. And now it has surpassed YouTube on how much time people are spending there every single day. And, you know, I guess you can see here, this is just validated. This is where everyone, this is where your consumer is spending its time. And one of the things that I've learned is Tristan and I have kind of gone down this, this journey. And I don't know if, I don't think Tristan talk too much about drunk on social, but we decided to to create this platform called drunk on social. It has nothing to do with drinking alcohol by the, by the way. Uh, but we decided that we were going to do this. Uh, it was early 2019, I believe, or I'm sorry, early 2020. So right before COVID end of 2019. And we were both talking about how, why didn't we get on TikTok sooner? So we were, this was specifically related to TikTok. And then the conversation continued down the path of, 
man, I wish I had joined it sooner. Why is nobody talking about this? You know, we're looking at it from a perspective of how can we use this for our businesses? How can we use this for real estate? And this was this was at a time when TikTok was only, was only a 15 second video. So you had to get a little bit more creative with it. But we decided at that time, as we started to do our own our research, like, is there an aggregator of what's going on in the world as it relates to social, social news, social strategies, the latest, the, the latest effects, the latest tools? Nothing existed. Nobody was doing it. There are specialists on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and et cetera, but there was not one, you know, one service or one, one platform that was aggregating everything. So we decided we we're going to create it. And, and selfishly, we decided, you know, I don't care if anybody follows us. We're doing this for our own good because we don't want to be behind. We want to stay ahead. And as I started to go down this, this rabbit hole, if you will, of, of studying this stuff and paying attention to different marketing blogs and social blogs and all these things, I notice that as I'm reading about the best marketing companies in the world, the Nikes, the Cokes, the Pepsis, all these types of companies, the one thing in common was they are paying attention not to baby boomers, not to Gen X. They're actually paying attention, not even to millennials. They're paying attention to Gen Z. They're paying attention to the up and coming generation because they are the drivers of where everything is going as it relates to technology. And although it, as, as we look at it from a real estate community and think to ourselves, okay, Jeff, I get it from that perspective, but they're not the ones buying and selling homes yet, yet. And all of the generations that predated them are just following everything that the younger generations are doing as it, as it relates to tech. So although we might be sitting there thinking to ourselves, my kids are so damn lazy, those generations are so damn lazy, we're still following them whether we like it or not. Because guess what? We're all on Facebook that started as a college app right? Where most of us are on Instagram. That started as the place that everybody left Facebook for. Many of you, most of you are probably on TikTok, right? And so you got to, you got to kind of, you got to think outside of the box and, and stop and stop thinking of it from the perspective of, are they my consumer currently? Maybe not. Although that generation does now extend into their mid twenties, they're going to be, and there's going to a massive influx of them and they're shifting the way we market. It used to be fitting in. Now it's standing out. It used to be mass reach. It's all about virality. Now it's mass niche. It doesn't matter anymore. People want real, authentic. They don't necessarily want the, the perfection anymore. And it used to be broad, fixed, targeting. Now it's fluid cultural communities. And it's crazy how this has changed. But in little more than a decade, the impact of social has gone from being an entertaining extra to being literally a fully integrated part of nearly every aspect of daily life. For, for most of us, it's we sadly... We roll over in the morning, we pick up our phone and we check our notifications. We go sit on the toilet and guess what we do? We watch Instagram reels and TikToks and check up on Facebook. It's just what we do. We sit and we sit on public transit. We sit in the office. We sit at, we sit at the dining table. We lay in bed at night. I, I use this one all the time. My wife will sit down on the couch, turn on the television, lay back and get on her phone. And I'm like, what are you doing? Why did you even turn on the, the TV? And she's like, I just back, just background noise. And, and as I think about that and I watch that and I giggle about it, I'm thinking to myself, so does everybody else. And this is what, this is what we're doing. This is where we're spending our time. And so just to give you a little context for those of you that aren't paying attention to the generations, these are the generations. These are roughly the age, the age range of the generations that I'm speaking of. And these are the people that I'm paying attention to, the Gen Y and the Gen Z. And part of it is because, especially as a real estate professional, we all know that these two generations have not bought homes like the generations that predated them. Like my generation, Gen X and baby boomers, like it's just what you did, right? You got out of college. Your immediate goal over the next five to 10 years was to buy a home. That's just what we did. But then you have to remember that Gen Y, what happened? They watched their parents go through hell in 07 and 08. So it turned them off. It gave them a bad taste in their mouth for real estate. Gen Z is completely different. They didn't experience that. But now you've got two generations of people. You've got high interest rates. You've got low inventory. You've got super high uh, home values. At what point is that going to correct? At what point is that going to shift? And when it does, is your brand and business going to be ready to market to them? Is it going to speak to them? Are you going to touch them? Are you going to attract that business? And that's kind of what I want to set you guys up for today. 
Uh, the goal, as I break it down, is threefold. It's omnipresence, as I've already touched on. You're touching them anywhere and everywhere. It doesn't have to be a certain highway. It doesn't have to be a certain newspaper, a certain time that they have to turn on, a certain uh, television station. None of that. Like, literally, we're on it all day, every day, throughout the course of our day. You can have omnipresence in front of your past customers, your family, uh, new customers, et cetera. Uh, you have an opportunity to engage. You think about all of those past mediums, those marketing mediums, you had no opportunity to engage. You just marketed, you advertised, and you hoped that somebody might call you. Now you have this opportunity to create content, to connect with people, and they're raising their hand essentially to talk to you. And now you have that opportunity to engage back and you have the ability to establish yourself as an authority. And I'm not talking about, you know, the, the best home seller, right? The, 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 the person that will take them out to the most houses to see homes, uh, has the most market data. Let's be honest. We all really have access to the same stuff. Some of us have more experience than others, but by and large, we all have access to the same data. Uh, if, if, if we go to social media and claim to be a real estate expert, we are essentially lumping ourselves in a massive diluted group of professionals, by far the most diluted group that exists on social media, hands down, because our industry is out ahead. And so when you think about establishing yourself as an authority, I'm talking about what do you do that can allow you to connect with more humans on social and create more conversation, create more parasocial relationships, which is a one-sided relationship where one person extends emotional energy, interest and time, and the other party doesn't know they exist. You know, in my world, that was, I had a parasocial relationship with Maverick and Goose from Top Gun. I knew who they were. I felt like we were buddies, but they had no idea who I that I existed or athletes, right? Or Hollywood, you know, other Hollywood actors and whatnot. That's what it meant to us uh, 10, 15 years ago. Today, we as Average Joes, average Jeffs are making relationships with people. I mean, literally this weekend, and I won't have time to go into that, uh, but I've, I've built a big geo strategy around a, a geographical area here in Missouri. And I was out at events all weekend and several times had people come up and say, you're the TikTok guy. Or literally somebody walked up and said, Jeff Fitzer. And I turned around thinking I would know who they were. And she walked up to me and said, with a group of people, we follow you on TikTok. We love your videos. Keep doing what you're doing. You're awesome. And of course, my buddies had to give me shit for that. But that's the that's what we are doing now. We're building parasocial relationships and and getting that no like and trust from people we've never even met before. And it's creating so much opportunity for us. This guy's got it all figured out. For those of you who do not know who this is, this is Mr. Beast. He is the number one individual YouTuber on the planet. He's got it figured out. And, and the advice that I give to real estate agents is, as I was alluding to previously, which is if you look at yourself as a real estate agent and that's how you're introducing yourself to your potential clients or maybe your friends and family, you are diluting yourself. Like what makes you any different than anybody else? And please don't tell me it's because you treat your customers like family. We all do, right? You care about your customer, right? That we all do. Where What you have to figure out is how can I create differentiation from every single real estate agent who's doing the exact same thing all over social media. And so what I say is you should shift your mindset to call yourself a media company that sells real estate and embrace the idea that you're going to create content to stay top of mind because you now have this medium where everybody is spending all of their time. It's crazy, crazy good. As I mentioned, most of us are doing social all wrong. I'm not going to I'm not going to beat you, most of you up about this, but this is what it looks like, right? This is what social media to all of us looks like. It's one big spam advertisement. We go to social media and sadly, there's a lot of coaches and a lot of uh, brokers and leaders in our industry that are telling you, uh, make the most noise, talk the most about the open houses and the Monday market updates and the, your closings and all that. You establish yourself as an authority. But what they're, what they're actually forgetting or not having any clue about, they have complete ignorance to the fact that there's an algorithm behind this. There's a science behind social media. And if you're putting out content that is not getting any engagement, you are completely wasting your time because nobody's seeing it other than maybe your spouse, your mom, and a handful of other people in your sphere. That's it. And so the un to understand that social media is a place to connect with people and to engage with people. And the whole purpose of reaching more people is getting more engagement. And if you're doing what you're seeing on my screen right now, the odds are it's not performing and it's not working for you. And this is why it's not working for you. If your social profiles, if your grid looks something like this, I'm making Michael's face. 
because this is what we as an industry are very guilty of. And I know all of these people. So uh, they they actually, I coach all of them. So we're shifting this for all of them. But if it looks like this, it's a bunch of graphics. It looks like this. It's a bunch of open house in contract, or it's just this, just again, a bunch of graphics. And what is the advantage of having a pre-approval letter? That's not why people are opening up social media. That's not why they're there. This, These are Instagram pages. Instagram favors what? Video. So these pages are not going to perform. What, it, what you want your social to look like is more like this or this or this or this. And there's a lot of real estate agents that are doing it at a very high level, but you notice the common thread between the ones that are performing and the ones that are not. It's authenticity. These are humans. They're putting themselves in front of the camera and they're creating content. They're doing it differently. Janet Brink is, is being very authentic. Tyler Hassman is doing all listing videos. That's all he does. And he's crushing it. Uh, this gentleman, I don't even know. I just found him and he's doing a fantastic job and has a very clean looking grid uh, because he's putting these cover photos on there and using big bubble letters. And then, and then Kyle Handy is, is as you can see, it's very authentic. It's he, he, who he is as a human being. He's sharing that with his audience. This is what our industry does. This was a, uh, I saw a cartoon in a, or I, I had it forwarded to me. Some, some, a sales leader had sent it. And the, the cartoon was the picture of, of a, of an employee in a retail store standing at a window, looking out the window across the street. And their manager was standing behind them saying, you know, maybe if you stop paying so much attention to what your competition is doing, you'd make more sales. And that's exactly what's going on with social media. Stop paying so much attention to what your other real estate agent uh, competition or peers are doing and, and focus on differentiation. We get so caught up in, well, they did that, so I must, I should do that. That's exactly why we do closing photos because we saw somebody do it and thought, well, they can't be the only one. Somebody else did a money market update. Well, they can't be the only one. But as social has evolved, now that stuff is not getting engagement anymore because audiences are not interested in it. The reality is when you go to social, the algorithm knows that you're a real estate agent. So what is it going to show you? What does it think you're interested in? Real estate content. When your neighbor who's about ready to sell their home goes to social, who has zero ties to real estate, opens up social media, they see French bulldogs. They see golfing. They see hunting. They see food. They see someone else's kids. They don't see real estate. And so if you understand that, then you might shift your strategy and start getting a little bit more th authentic because before you can do anything, you have to establish content pillars. If you want to establish some consistency on social, you have to know what to post about. And before you can even do that, you have to decide, well, is this post self-serving or is it serving others? And every time we're posting about real estate, who's that serving? I know some of you are going to want to argue that it's serving your community, but it's, it's not. It's serving your commission check. It's, it's so you can get another buyer, another seller, and sell another house. But if you actually understand that consumers on social media want to be served, they want content that either entertains them or educates them or brings value to them, real value to them. And I'm not talking about a money market update. I'm talking about value, what's going on in the community, that type of value then you will start to see your social media, your channels thrive and, and you'll, you'll see growth. So this is what I did when I started this social media journey. It didn't look pretty back when I started this six, seven years ago. Uh, but what I did was I was listening to people like Gary Vee and he was telling me that I need to be uh, posting seven times a day. This is what Gary Vee was saying six, seven years ago. That's how far out ahead Gary Vee is. And I was like, damn, Gary, there's no way in hell I can come up with something to post about seven times a day. So I had to kind of reshift my own, I rewire my own brain and think, all right, what should I be posting about? And and it's a longer story than, than I have time to share today. But the reality was I was just like all of you, except I was ahead from, from most of you. I was doing Facebook lives when Facebook live was new. I was talking about at the time I was just in mortgage. Now I'm in a lot of things, but I was just talking about mortgage and that kind of stuff. And I was boring myself. And I was like, this is terrible. I don't see how this is going to work. And I remember I did a video with, at the time my daughter was 13, she's 19 today, and she was making slime, selling it on Etsy. And I thought, you know what, Isabel, why don't we go live on Facebook? Because that was really the thing then. Nothing, there really wasn't another social app and or non-relevant. Non and and I said, let's go, let's let's make slime and then we'll give them your Etsy, your Etsy link and see if we can't sell some slime. That video got 
tens of thousands of views, hundreds, maybe even close to a thousand comments of people just commenting saying, oh my God, that is so awesome. Oh my God, my kids do the same thing. You're such a great dad. All this stuff. And it was that light bulb moment for me. It was like, damn, I spend all this time putting together these videos that serve my business and nobody responds or engages or cares. And this, as this is a number of years ago. And then I did this video and it just completely blew up. And I'm like, this is how I'm going to connect with people. And so this is where I decided I'm going to create my own little cheat sheet. I'm going to put a little, I'm going to put a post-it note in my office. I'm going to put a post-it note in my home office, in my car, on my nightstand, and the mirror in my bathroom, because I want to remind myself, what should I be what should I be documenting that I'm not documenting now? And so it's just thinking about what am I doing every single day, every single week, every single month, that all I have to do is turn the camera on and share it. And it was at that point in time when I realized as I started to do more of that, I started to create pockets of raving fans, pockets of followers, pockets of people that liked me, not because I'm in real estate, but they liked me because I spend time at the Lake of the Ozarks because I play golf, because I have bird feeders right outside my window here. And I'm, I'm always feeding them and watching them that kind of, because I'm into exercise and fitness, the, th all these things started to create all of these, all of these different pockets of raving fans that now will all potentially become eventual consumers. Now, if you talk to most social coaches, they're going to tell you that you need to find a niche and they're right. And they're also 100% wrong. And here's why. They're right. I've found my niches. I'm doubling down, tripling down on my niches, but it took me years to figure this out because I, because what we want to do is we want to, we want to determine our niches. We want to say, I want to go on social and talk about real estate and that's going to be my niche. And then you get no engagement, you get nothing that comes from it. And you're thinking to yourself, well, this doesn't work because as, although the coaches are right, you do need to find a niche. What they're not telling you is it's going to take you time of throwing things up against a wall to see what sticks because ultimately our consumer, the consumer, your audience chooses your niche. You don't get to choose it. And this is why you go through that exercise with the pillars of content so that you can throw things up against a wall and see what sticks. Now I'm going to, I'm going to run through this pretty quickly because I know we're running short on time. Here's my suggestion and why. I say you should dominate at least two platforms because for most of you, you're all on Facebook. I already know this. And for many of you, you're on multiple platforms, but maybe you're not posting as consistently as you should be. Well, the most obvious reason why you should be, why you should be on two platforms is because obviously Facebook owns Instagram. The reason why I say that Instagram should actually become your cornerstone platform is because it's going to make you a better creator. If you just live in the Facebook world, you're living in the retirement home of social media apps. It's still very relevant. There's still more 100,000 errors there. Don't get me wrong. I 100% agree. I'm not saying vacate Facebook, but but it's it doesn't have the tools and the effects and, and, and the things that you can use to make your content stand out. Instagram has become the copycat of TikTok. If you want my honest opinion, TikTok is by far the most advanced platform that exists. But it doesn't talk and play well. I mean, it does actually play well with, but it doesn't work as well as Instagram does to Facebook. And so, so changing the way that you create your strategy around social, making it around Instagram, not worrying about how many followers you have, but just understanding that you're going to have more tools. You're going to be able to create better content that you can automatically toggle a couple of buttons and it will automatically post to Facebook. And if I had time, I would show you how to do that. Uh, maybe I can share a, a separate video on this uh, with you guys because I want to jump ahead. But that's the reason why I say to uh, to focus on Instagram. My current strategies focus around these three platforms. I post to all of them, uh, but these are the three that I'm posting to every day. And then I have VAs uh, kind of multiply myself on the other platforms. Your bio is your SEO. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, but if your bio doesn't look something like this, it probably isn't very good. We as humans like pictures. So you have to do what you can here. When, when you're posting to any of the social platforms, the natural inclination of somebody of your audience is to click on your bio to go check you out. What is their first impression? So what you need to do is you need to make sure, first of all, it's optimized to look right. So use emojis as bullet points because it's more eye catching and use bullet points because it's easy to read through. If you type a paragraph, it's less likely for somebody to actually stick around and want to follow you. So quickly bullet point who you are. So what I suggest is make sure that you're bullet pointing what someone can expect 
from your content. Now, if they go to scroll your page and you put on here that you are a uh, pickleball uh, professional, whatever you want to call yourself, uh, and you don't have any content about pickleball, then you're kind of a fraud. Why did you even list it? So make sure you're listing things that are going to be things that are from your pillars of content that might attract people to want to follow and connect with you. This is very important. Now, I'm going to skip through these slides here. This is where I would show you how to set up the proper account. I'm just going to tell you as I, as I scroll through these that the right account that you want to have on Instagram is a creator account. Uh, it's creator slash professional account. It's going to give you the most tools. It's not like Facebook. And you want to make sure that you're sharing across profiles and your Instagram is connected to your personal Facebook, not your business Facebook. Your business Facebook is a graveyard. And so make sure that you're connected across these platforms. <clears throat> TikTok is basically the same. And we're going to go into that here in just a second because TikTok is also the rabbit hole of all rabbit holes. Uh, if you LUT, and this is really all social, but TikTok's the, wor the worst or the best at it, whichever way you want to look at it. It is, the, it is the app that if you open up that app, and the likelihood of you looking at your watch and it being an hour later, it's very high with TikTok. And so you have to be very intentional with what you're doing on these platforms. TikTok has become for me exactly what I'm describing. For me, it was, I had dipped multiple pillars going to TikTok. My audience consistently told me through their engagement, we like Lake of the Ozarks. I've since grown and my, my, my audience is growing. These are literally updated as of today. Uh, if, if you had talked to me just a couple of months ago, I was under 40,000. My follower count is growing. My opportunities are growing. I'm starting a real estate company at the Lake of the Ozarks. I've sold real estate and I'm not a real estate agent as a result of my TikTok. And I've gotten brand deals as a result of my TikTok. It's absolutely insane. You can just go stalk it. It's called Lake of the Ozarks Lifestyle. You can see the engagement. Uh, if, I, if my post gets less than a couple thousand views, it's, it's not performing very well for me uh, because that's how engaged my audience is. And you can see that all I'm doing is basically becoming the aggregator of all of the things that are going on in a community. I mean, you can see here, I will literally take local news, snip a picture, put it behind me, use a green screen and just talk about it. The reason why I'm performing so well, I think, uh, because I compare myself to other Lake of the Ozarks creators and I have the most follower account, the most engagement, and these people are doing it at a higher, more professional, sexier video quality level is because of my authenticity. These other, these other platforms are putting out some really cool, sexy content, but it's not authentic. And I'm actually throwing myself out there. I'm giving my opinion. I'm talking about what's happening. I'm giving advice. I'm responding to comments. When people say, where's the best place to put my boat in the water? Hey, first time I'm going to the Lake of the Ozark shootout this weekend. Where should I go? I'm taking that comment. I'm commenting on it and I'm giving them advice. I look at myself as all things lifestyle driven around a community and giving it to them. And then I'm sprinkling in real estate. This is a 60 day period. I literally pulled this data today. You can't buy this. You cannot buy this type of reach on any advertising medium that exists. And I don't necessarily even care about the views because that's just vanity. I don't care so, so much about the likes. That's vanity. But I've got almost 50,000 people stalking me, looking me up, checking me out. 4,700 hand raisers over 60 days. 11,000 people marketing me for me. And 3.6 million of them are unique views. So that just goes to prove that it's not my mom just tapping on my, my, my TikTok all day long. It's unique, new followers all day, every day. It's, take, I've, I've, it's, it's grown legs so much so that I now have a YouTube channel. I now have a Facebook group. We have an Instagram page all around this uh, because I want to meet my consumer where they want to be met. This is just examples of opportunities. I always get people that ask this particular guy. This is the first one. Uh, last September. So a year ago, this is when I started this about a year ago, this guy reached out and was asking me questions. And mind you, I'm not a real estate agent. I didn't even put content out back, back then about real estate. But if you read through this, he basically says, Hey, I look to you. You're the expert about the Lake of the Ozarks. We're looking to buy there. It went on. And I asked him, I said, Hey, do you want me to connect you to a real estate agent? There was no timestamp. He just immediately sent me his phone number, connected him to the agents. It turned out it was two buyers. Just like that, just because he sees me as the authority over a geographic area and it's turned into more and more questions. I've got more than I could even share. It's turned into brand deals, things I didn't even expect. I also post real estate listings. I get it into as many listings as I possibly can and I post them. I share them for agents, for agent friends down there. And these same agents will be the ones joining my real estate brokerage that when I started. And just to give you an example, these are the analytics just on my the last five listing videos. I don't know how many of you post listing videos, but I don't think anybody's getting this kind of engagement on your listing videos. It's insane over my business, right? And my vision here is, and the reason just to give you guys a little context and I'll, and I'll start to wrap up, 
is I started this as a proof of concept because I have a crawl in my ass uh, about TikTok because I've been criticized for it. And, and I'll tell you all, I started standing on stages at, towards uh, third quarter of 2019 talking about TikTok. Nobody knew what TikTok was. The only reason I did is because I had teenage daughters. And because I saw a vision, I saw something. I was like, I, I see I see this being the perfect setup for your listing, for your longer form listing videos. And so over the next probably six to 12 months, I was an idiot, like literally in groups, lab code agents, you're an idiot. Why, why are you even talking about TikTok? And then of course the shift happened, TikTok became relevant. And I went from being an idiot to a genius overnight. And now I'm just running with it. Really, I started this as a proof of concept just to prove this will work. Now it's creating opportunities. Like I said, brand deals, I get paid to promote products and I'm building and starting a real estate company. And, and mind you, I haven't didn't even tell Chris this. I have a, two real estate brokerages that are currently fighting for me to join their brand. And that's only because they know about it. And so it's just the opportunities that exist because I'm going to create buyer leads. And over time, this is where I believe the world is going because I I'm winning attention. I know I'm not only winning attention. I already know these people like me because they're seeing me in public and they're saying hi to me. They're commenting on my stuff. When somebody's going to sell their house at Lake of the Ozarks, what's the first thing they're going to think of? I want the person or agent who's going to get the most attention on my property to sell my house. Whether that matters or not, this is the way humans are going to think. And it's my intent to dominate this market. And then of course, to teach it and grow it. I'm going to skip through this. Facebook groups are still very relevant. I will say this just real quick, guys. The one thing I will point out about Facebook groups is 73% uh, of social media users say that the most important group in their life is online. Maybe we'll just have to do another session and I can talk more about this. There's four different types of groups you can have. Uh, I'm going to stop here. I've got some more slides on AI, but I don't want to be, I want to be mindful of the time. So I'm going to let you guys tell me if you want me to wrap up or if you want to jump into questions. I think I need to get to jump into questions. I'm seeing like a lot of questions just in this vein of like, amazing. How do I get started? And, and it's like, how do I make my niche, the local niche for real estate? Um, and I think Jeff, you know, for some, a year ago, right? You you launched the Lake of the Ozarks group. Like, what was your first post? And like, how did you know it was the right thing? And why did you do that? Well, it started several years ago. So when I was on TikTok, I'm just doing, I was practicing what I was preaching. I was throwing quote unquote shit up against a wall and saw what's to see what stick. I wanted to be known as a social media you know, guy, like a coach. I wanted to be known as a video influencer. I, that's what I wanted my my niche to be. Uh, but that's not what TikTok saw. And so I was just posting lifestyle stuff because I'm just living life, right? So I would post my wife, my kids. I'd post about Lake of the Ozarks. And it, over time, and Tristan and I are watching this, and I'm like, dude, this post is blowing up about this boat. And then a month later, dude, this post. And uh, it was literally last August. It was middle of August last year. And I called Tristan and I said, dude, I want you to kick me in the you know what, if I ever post anything on my TikTok ever again, that's not Lake of the Ozarks. And he just laughed and he's like, dude, I think you're right. I think you need to go all in. And so it was a test and I just wanted to see where it went. And then I got a lead a month later and I was like, holy crap. Like I'm not even talking about real estate yet. Wait till I start talking about real estate. And, um, and then, yeah, and then brand deals started. And so it, it, it's really been an evolution of kind of figuring out. So go back to your question. What should you post about? I'm just sharing life. Like I know what that audience wants. I've kind of studied it. I'm paying attention to it based on the engagement. It's a very pro conservative, pro Trump audience. So whether I believe that or not, I'm going to play the game. I know what my audience is. I know what they want. I'm going to give them what they want. And, and so I know they love boating. I know they love things to do. I know they love local, local business highlights. This is every community. So boating may not apply, but everybody loves it when, you know, you give them, here's an example. Here's five things to do within an hour drive of my community on Labor Day. Like you give them stuff that actually is value to them. Or like I was telling you, like there was this big, these big boat races. It's very famous, very popular this past weekend. And for two or three weeks leading up to it, I was just pummeling content, what to do, things to do. Here's tips. Here's advice. Uh, while I'm sprinkling in fast boats and sprinkling in news, I have a video right now that's running. It's got 1.7 million views. All I did, it was a boat crash. All I did was steal one of my competitors videos. I gave him credit and put myself in front of it and talked about it, gave my opinion. There was a boat crash at night. And I said, I'm sorry, but if you're driving a boat faster than 20, 30 miles an hour at night, you're an idiot. I actually said five to 10 miles an hour, which really got a lot of 
a lot of engagement, but that's, I believe it. Like if you're driving a boat at night, you should be going super slow. Right. And all I did was give my opinion and it's run. It's gained me so many followers. And, and then I did follow-up videos. Here's what happened. Here's, you know, here's the latest. I just look at myself as the local aggregator of all things that are going on within my community. And I realize people love it. Yeah. And so I want to clarify something because I know agents have worked with agents a long time. When you said, I, I figured out what people are into in my market. That wasn't some research study you went and did online and some like enormous amount of things you did. What you did is you got started and you started posting things and trying different things. And then you reviewed the engagement with those videos you were making. And that was your learning lab. It was like a real life learning lab of I tried this and I tried this and I tried that. And eventually you tried the same thing a few times and you started to find a pattern, right? Bingo. Yeah. And so agents, for you listening, the key takeaway I hope you're taking away, both from Jeff, from Tristan, from some of the other people we've had on that have talked about social is just get started. Just start posting. Keep posting consistently. And then pay attention, just like any other part of your business, right? Know your numbers, watch your numbers and build and grow based on what you're learning. Um, so Jeff, there's, a, there's some questions also about like LinkedIn versus Facebook. Like where, where how would you coach folks to focus? I love, I love LinkedIn too, by the way. I, I, here's why I love LinkedIn only because it's the one platform where you can still target without being restricted. Uh, and so, but so I use LinkedIn a little bit more strategically. So I'm going and literally targeting, targeting people like, uh, so for my businesses, I'm either targeting real estate agents for social media coaching, or I'm targeting loan officers to recruit. Or uh, if if I'm a real estate agent, I might be targeting a local business, a big business within my community so that they see my content. Now, LinkedIn is not a fraction of authentic as any of the other platforms. So live in the platform, know what they want. Um, so it's different. And that's why I don't love it because I like just being me. And messing with my wife and turning on my camera and then posting it. And people love that stuff because it's so relatable. It's so real, right? Uh, my kids, the dogs, whatever. I love living in that world and it works. But I think a lot of people have a hard time understanding, okay, I can post about my Frenchie. How is this going to equate to business? And the answer is it's going to get people kind of sucked into your algorithm, get people connected to you. And if you continue to do this cons consecutively, consistently – you're going to sprinkle in real estate content around your pillars. What doesn't matter what platform, even LinkedIn. If you go on LinkedIn and spam them that you're a real estate agent, it's probably not going to work very well. If you go to LinkedIn and you educate them around things that are actually interesting to them, sprinkle in real estate, what happens is that stuff, that real estate stuff is actually going to show up in their feed now because you got to hack their algorithm first. If you don't hack their algorithm first organically, it's a waste of time. And so that's the point. The point is get people connected to you liking, commenting, engaging, sharing, saving. And now you know you hacked their feeds and now anything that you post, the odds of them seeing it. I'll tell you right now, every time I post anything promoting a product on TikTok, for example, it doesn't perform very well. And I know it's not going to, but I still know that it's getting seen. So I just sprinkle it in. I never will inundate my audience with too much spammy salesy stuff because I'll lose my audience. I got to give them what they want. And then, um, and, then, and then sprinkle in the sale every once in a while. I love it. I love it. Um, if you were going to give like a piece of advice and I'll kind of couch this in like parting thought to the agents that are on here listening, there's well over 200 now. Um, like what should their next video be about? Like what is going to create engagement? Actually, the first thing that you should do is if you haven't done it is, is do that exercise where you write down, you know, think about who you are as a human being. What are the things that you're doing? Are you an avid reader? You're an avid Netflix flex watcher. Are you a pickleball player? I'm coaching somebody right now who's a pickleball player. Um, what are the things that you're already doing in your life? You're a parent, you're going to the kids games, your kids are in school. Like what is it that's already happening and start documenting more often and just start staring at, don't worry about the fact that you're going to confuse the algorithm because you are. The algorithms need to know who you are in order to know who to show your content to. The problem is, is if it doesn't work, it you, it's dead in the water, right? So 
follow, follow that lead, unless you already know that you just want to go all in on a local community, because that's a hack for every real estate agent ever. You just got to be consistent. Uh, if that's not your jam, or there's a bunch of agents in your market that are already doing it at a high level, which there's very few markets where that's actually happening consistently, uh, just start throwing stuff up against a wall. What are you doing every day? Document it more often, get in the practice of sharing, start learning how to use the tools. The Like, like for example, a green screen. Uh, within Instagram. It's so easy to use and so many agents don't know how to use it. Uh, how to do a remix video. It's just hacking what is somebody else's you know, content and then using the buttons, you know, knowing just what to do, how to add links, how to tag yourself, how to add a GIF and emojis and all these kind of stuff, right? These are basic things. Learning how to do this and just getting getting consistent at it, it'll start to create more conversations. You're just going to walk into church and the grocery store and all these different places and people are going to recognize you. It makes conversations so much easier. That's tremendous. So what I heard is be an explorer, which yeah. that's something we coached you at Ojo nonstop is get out there, try new things. Um, just be okay with failing. Uh, you're going to get it wrong as much as you get it right. As long as you're going forward, that's the only yeah. thing that matters. So yeah. um, Jeff, I will say thank you on behalf of the 200 plus people here. For those of you that are here, give Jeff like an applause or a thumbs up or something as a thank you, because I know this was tremendously valuable. I took a page and a half of notes on, on things that I know I should be doing. Look at that. Look at all those emojis coming through. Um, for those of you that uh, are here and you're on the Ojo Select Network, I have one minute of product updates to share with you. Um, Jeff, we'll cut this up. We'll send out the recordings. We'll tag you on social. For those of you that don't already follow Jeff, you should engage with him, check out his content, watch what he does, and pattern match it in your local market. What an easy cheat code to get ahead. So again, Jeff, thank you for your time. Feel free to stay on, but I'm going to share some quick Ojo stuff with the team. So number one, if you are in the Ojo Spark Network and you have not yet added the email address for your CRM that your CRM uses to parse leads into, you should do that. Go into your profile. You can now add this. You'll see it's right here under lead awarded introduction email. This is a second email like Chime, Boomtown, Commission Zing, Crawlbot. They all have a special email you can put in here. It's awesome. It'll drop the lead right into your CRM. So if you haven't done this, go set it up. Second is we added a global navigation tag. This is called a hamburger. I know I love calling it a hamburger. It looks like a hamburger. It's a stack of lines. Click on it. It'll open. And there's a new way to get around. It's a new functionality inside of your Ojo agent tools. Go check it out. Third and final thing. This is a long app for thing. So now when you get your lead, your text lead offers from Ojo, there is a new thing here that is going to be called call to action. And what you're going to see is, what does the consumer want? Do they just want to ask a question? Are they trying to message an agent? Or like in this case, are they actually trying to schedule a tour of a property? One of the most important things you can do is just give people what they want. So if they're trying to schedule a tour, which over a third of the people that, that we refer to agents are looking to either schedule a tour, schedule showing, get a virtual tour or whatever, you will now have that information here as well as in the email that comes out to you. So... Pay attention to that, plug into that. Uh, we know that's tremendously valuable. We have started to hear great feedback from agents about that. So we appreciate all of you sticking on with us. Thank you for doing that. Uh, thank you again to Jeff. And by the way, uh, if you weren't watching the chat, Jenna dropped uh, a link so that you can see our like kind of lawyerly terms. But if you wanna be entered to win some Ojo merch, Throw your name in the chat. You got 30 seconds before we sign off. Again, I'll close it out with a thank you to Jeff. Uh, Jeff, what's? can you put your, uh, or give us like your app or however, how do people find you on social? Uh, Jenna's got all that information. So I sent her a couple of slides. I've got a newsletter that I actually aggregate my favorite most value-based posts every week. And that's all it is. I send out two or three links to post because a lot of people tell me you post so much, I can't keep up. And so there's that newsletter you can join and then she's going to send you my social links uh, to follow me. I'm easy to find. It's my name on pretty much every platform. You can even find me that way on TikTok. So. Amazing. All right, Jeff, thank you. Ojo Select Network Agents. Thank you, Jenna, Chris. We're signing off. We'll see you all next month. Thank you. Bye, Bye guys. Thank you. Bye, Mike.